Hi, um, this is a paper doll that I designed called Estelle and today I'm going to show you how I assembled her and embellished her. And you can find the digital download in the link in the description of this video um, in my shop. So what I started out doing is I printed it out and I'm using right here an acrylic ink to embellish and I'm using a really tiny paintbrush. It's um, a synthetic brush because I find that works best for me with acrylics and acrylic inks. And as you notice I'm just um, adding a little bit of the gold detailing to the comb of the doll on the head that I'm going to glue on to the rest of the entire um, paper doll. Um, if you don't have um, acrylic inks, you can use a gold, just plain acrylic paint. And what I'm doing here is I'm just embellishing the fan. And I feel like just, you know, adding this little bit of extra touch and extra care, um, gives it a much nicer overall look when you're finished with the paper doll project. Um, here I'm just adding a little bit of earrings, gold for the earrings, and here I am adding um, a little bit of embellishment on the dragonfly wings. And if you choose to use them, you can make your Estelle doll into a fairy like I did. And I find that it just adds um, a little bit um, more embellishment that I like. And it just makes it sparkle a little bit more. Um, and I find it very relaxing just to um, add these little details to the paper doll. Um, the paper doll itself is my own original design and I had um, painted it with watercolors before I reproduced it for the digital download that you can purchase in my shop. Um, one of the things that inspired me to create this doll was my fascination with um, tuck comb Gronertal dolls and I've been fascinated with them for a really long time. If you're not familiar with them, um, they were wooden carved dolls with a tuck comb. As you can see she has that little gold tuck comb. And um, they were handcrafted in Austria, Germany, and Italy. So it was kind of like a cottage craft. And a very small version of the dolls were often coarsely carved, um, were called peg woodens, and they were jointed with a wooden peg joint. And many of these dolls um, also had a tuck comb hair ornament and were sold for a penny. So they, they at this time, I think, you know, they were predominantly made in Germany. Um, and um, Queen Victoria was quite fond of peg woodens and she spent many hours uh, dressing her dolls. So, you know, she had the most delightful collection and that's, you know, probably part of my fascination with them. Now here what I did is I added some satin acrylic medium and I'm just brushing it on. Now I would make sure that the print um, had been printed the day before, before you add the medium. And you can also use varnish. I just don't like the smell of it. So I tend to use the medium. Here, you've, if you notice, um, I have cut out um, three layers. Um, one is the printed version of the paper doll. And then I have two other layers that I cut out of cardstock. And the printed version, um, I did print it on cardstock. So this gives the paper doll a lot of extra strength. And what I'm doing is I'm using a liquid 
glue, whatever your favorite liquid glue is. Um, but it's a quick drying glue and I think that works the best for this project. And um, I have made the paper dolls before without the added layers of cardstock and I just find that it, adding these two extra layers of cardstock to the paper doll gives it um, much um, more um, I don't know how should I say it, but basically it, it's just sturdier and it gives it a much nicer look. And as you notice, I'm using um, wax paper and it's so that things don't stick. And I'm also using a brayer and I just find that that's much more helpful. Now I'm doing the same thing for the arms where I'm layering them with two additional layers of cardstock and gluing them together. And again, I'm using the same quick dry glue. And I think this brand is Scotch, but it doesn't matter what brand it is. It's, you know, whatever you have and you like to use. Um, but the quick drying liquid, I think, works the best. And again, you know, I'm just gluing everything together. And I do keep um, close to me um, a moist towelette um, so that I don't get my hands very sticky and then um, get glue onto the, you know, the front of the paper doll or add too much to it. So that's what I was doing, was just wiping my hands off so I'm not making a mess out of the project. And just kind of lining everything up. And I did use um, a textured uh, cardstock. Um, the cardstock in particular that I used was, I think it was AC cardstock. And I use the textured cardstock also to print out the paper doll. Um, and you don't have to use that brand, but um, you know, whatever one that you find you like the best. And again, I'm doing the same process for the dragonfly wings. And I really think that, you know, this adding these layers really makes a big difference. Now you don't have to if you don't want to. I mean, you can also use this project um, as a collage for junk journaling or collaging or things like that. And then you really wouldn't need to add the extra layers of the cardstock. And again here, I'm just kind of putting everything together and adding the printed part of the dragonfly. Now, if you purchase the um, paper doll from my shop, um, you will have um, a template for cutting out the cardstock. And that'll be the solid color um, template for everything. And, um, you know, I just find all of this really relaxing, you know. And um, what I do do is, you know, after um, I've put everything all the layers together. I did let it dry overnight um, in between wax paper under some heavy books. And I find that keeps um, the project from warping, you know, with the wet glue. I really don't use, I tend to use the glue stick um, for this kind of project. I don't think it holds well enough. 
um, which is why I do use the liquid glue. But, you know, use what you would like. Now, this is the um, stand. And again, it's really important for the stand to have that extra support. And um, putting that together. And again, um, it does help to dry everything in between layers of the um, wax paper under something heavy, like, you know, some good heavy books. Um, I do like the brayer because I feel like it kind of helps smooth everything out when I'm doing that. And here I'm adding the dress. Now that I didn't add extra layers um, because it wasn't really necessary. The rest of the doll had that. And this just kind of adding the dress like this adds a little bit more dimension to the piece. And I'm making sure everything's lined up before I bray it. Now, if you notice, I'm wiping down the wax paper, too, so that I don't smear glue on everything when I'm using it to glue things down. And here I'm adding the head. And just gluing that down in place. And, um... If you wish, um, I had cut out the little flowers and decided to attach them at the hem of her skirt. Um, and this, you know, costume that I decided to dress her in is more of the Jane Austen style dress and time period. So I decided to, you know, once I decided where I was going to place everything, I'm just gluing them in place. And again, um, it just adds a little bit of extra dimension to the paper doll. And because they're so tiny, it um, sometimes a little difficult and probably, um, if you had a tweezer handy, it probably would be helpful to put it all together. But here I am just using my fingers. And kind of alternating the colors of the flowers at the hem of the skirt. And once I have the flowers on, that part of the paper doll is ready to just let dry. So, um, before I let it all dry, I decided to add the doll to the stand. And if you get a little extra glue, just kind of wipe it up as quick as you can. It does happen. So this isn't perfection. It's just for fun. And I decided to glue the fan to one of the hands before I assemble everything together. And just making sure there's not a lot of excess glue. Now, one of the benefits of using the wax paper is that um, it does pick up excess glue if you accidentally get a little bit more. And here I am just, you know, laying everything down on the wax paper in a book. 
And then um, I did put another piece of wax paper on um, before I laid it on. I wouldn't just put the book on, but I did just there. Um, but I realized they did that and went back and put wax paper on. Now here what I'm doing is I have some miniature brads and I wanted them to match much more closely um, the skin tone and the costume. So I'm painting them starting out with the off-white acrylic paint. And then I decided to add a little bit of a blue acrylic paint into that so that it'll match more the costume. And I added a little bit of paint gray well actually that was ultramarine blue sorry and I'm just painting the larger brads and these are all miniature brads but um, some were a lot tinier than the others and then I'm adding a little bit of white to kind of give it that speckled look um, to lighten it up a little bit too because I found it was a little too dark. And I'm just playing with the color till I'm happy. And this is a, a purple acrylic. And a little bit of um, more of the off-white. And I had let the blue dry and I really didn't like it. So I decided to paint over them. So you don't have to do that. You can kind of play around um, and decide what color you would like or you can skip this whole process and purchase um, brads in the colors that you want. Now, what I'm using here is for the back of the paper doll. I mean, you could have cut it out out of a uh, cardstock that had a print on it, but I used a solid background. And what I'm using is archival ink. It's Ranger ink and sepia. And I'm using a French script stamp and I'm just putting that on the back of the paper doll pieces before I put it together. And again, you know, and I am using, as you noticed, uh, it's a very old mouse pad. And I do that when I use um, stamps and inks because um, I find that having that that um, foam kind of feel helps the stamping. And here I'm just using um, a brush that I use for stamp, you know, for the the inks, and I just kind of rub it against the ink pad, and then just brush it against the edges of um, all of the parts of the paper doll and the stand and I find that it gives it a nice finish um, but you don't have to do that it just you know depends on what you like but I tend to like the antique look that it gives things so um, but you can use different color inks you don't have to stay with sepia um, a lot of people use the Tim Holtz uh, distress inks and they have a variety of different colors um, but I, I just have the plain inks and I really like that too now what I did is I marked at the edge I think it was um, like a quarter 
inch from the end and I made a little mark and I did the same thing for the little strip for the stand and then just made a cut on both. And then I bent it in the center. And this is how you can make your paper doll stand up. So I'm just taking it off because I want, just wanted to show you how I did it. And now I'm just making a little mark where I want to put the brads. So um, for the digital download, I have done that for you. Um, and here I'm using a doll making needle to make the holes because I don't want the holes to be too large since the arms are so tiny. And again, you know, I'm using the doll maker's needle. And this is a relatively, has a relatively um, small eye so that it's not making, you know, a huge hole. Now, um, I think this would be, you know, it, it's just too tiny, I felt, for using any kind of hole punch. So I found the needle worked better. And even for an awl, like I have a bookmaking awl and I felt like that was just too large and would have made the holes too big. And now I'm putting the arms together with this, the brads that are off white and just attaching the lower arm to the upper arm first before I attach it to the doll. And I like to make them pretty tight so they'll hold their pose. Now for adding the wings, I did use my crocodile. Now again, you can just use uh, a needle if you would like, um, but I use the crocodile because I have it and it's just easier for me. And I used it on the smaller hole setting. And this I picked up in Michael's quite some time ago. Um, I bought it with, you know, when I had one of those 40% off coupons and really have found that it was a good purchase um, for a lot of my paper crafting. So here I'm just attaching the arm. And making sure, you know, there's good movement. And now I'm putting the larger brad for the wings. And that's the one that's kind of like a purplish blue. And there you have your Estelle. And that's how I put it together. So I'm 
really happy that you joined me today and thank you for watching my video and I hope you have fun crafting. Bye now.